This is Twit. <laughs> now, you've been an intelligence officer, Alan Malventano. So you yes, probably were not go. surprised when the NSA finally admitted <sighs> they didn't want to. But uh, Ron Wyden was holding up the appointment for the next NSA uh, director. So General uh, Nakamoto, uh, Nakasone, I should <laughs> say. Nak uh, what is it? It's the same name as the uh, Die Hard company, right? Nakasone. General Nakasone uh, sent a letter to Wyden saying... <sighs> Okay, I want to retire, so please. <laughs> yes, we do, in fact, buy and use various types of commercially available metadata for our foreign intelligence and cybersecurity missions. <sighs> yes, including data related to entirely domestic Internet communications. So now we know. They do collect all this data. Are you surprised? Well, that, that part that said entirely domestic, I don't think appeared in the actual letter from the NSA because I was reading through it. Oh, I'm actually, seeing it. It's in a quote in the New York Times article. Maybe. Let me, I can give you my perspective because I yes. used to work there. You're an intelligence. Right? Yeah, you're an intelligence agent. I, yes. I used to do this. Yes. Okay. So they have rules. It's Their mandate is foreign intelligence. They're not supposed to be after the U.S. Which, people. Which is why and, domestic would be a big deal. Right. Now, I will say this. Having had to work there and deal with that type of information, trust me, it makes the job harder. The fact that there is the potential that there's U.S. people information in there, right? Because the, the issue is if you have somebody in the U.S. and they're talking to somebody that's foreign and you're trying to surveil the foreign side of it, then you end up potentially with the other half of the conversation. That's like the Here, other here's, end. Right? Here's, here's the letter from General Nakasone. Yeah. Dear Director Haynes, the Honorable Director Haynes, <laughs> Director of National Intelligence. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. You're right. This is from Juan, Ron Wyden. So that's, right. that's, I get what you're saying. Right. So let me see if you I can find. Go... Here's the response. Okay. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I was you have looking to scroll at scroll down. Yeah, yeah, scroll down. This is now uh, addressed to uh, Senator Wyden from. Uh, let me just look at the bottom. Ronald S. Moultrie, who is somebody. He's he's you know part of the DNI, I guess. Following up on the letters regarding the Department of Defense, providing you with a below redacted answer to a question, I answered to you in 2021. Uh, well, the the actually, if you scroll up a little, it's the reply from. Uh, Nakasone. Oh, God, man. This is Itself. all in here. Okay. Yeah. We Dear don't need Senator to go all the way Wyden. into reading entire okay. pages. My of things, God, so. what if we had an AI summarize I this? I wish I had an AI <laughs> now. <laughs> DOD so, so components like require access and use here, information. Here's the perspective I can offer. Yeah. Here's the perspective I can offer. So, having worked here and having seen plenty of stories over the years, even some of which we've talked about on Twit, even yep. Yep. dating back to when we got the most epic spit take on Twit of all time from Leo. When he learned that I used to work for the NSA in the middle of... I didn't know that, them. actually, until you told me. I thought you <laughs> merely were a submariner. I didn't know you were also an NSA... As a man of many talents. You were a contractor, though, not an employee. It was a DOD... Well, the, the NSA contracts the military to have... So you were uh, working with the Navy yeah. on, on loan to the NSA. Correct, correct. Okay. So whenever these stories come about... Usually the gist of it is, and usually why I've learned that there's so much hesitation in even the NSA saying anything, is that if you look at the two stories, there's or the, the different perspectives, there's like a there's there's a dividing line, right? Even the the title of the article is going far in the one side. Hey, okay. NSA is getting all, right. all you US person information, right. right? Okay, good. All right. Now I can speak from the other side, right? If there was a magical way to make it so that the NSA could do their job of the foreign surveillance and not get any single word or bit of information from the U.S. people, it, I guarantee you they would hit that button because it makes the job so much harder, right? We don't we don't want to know what's in your email, like Leo, right? We want to know what the foreign people that were potentially plotting and doing, you know, the whole all the reasons why you would need to surveil have a foreign intelligence program, right, to protect the United States, right? That's the job that they have to do, all those people that are still working there. So, yeah, like, we, we don't want the other side of the conversation, but sometimes you don't have a choice 
but to get it in the act of doing the surveillance. And if that does happen, then you have to do a bunch of extra steps required by law, as to, like described in, you know, from Congress, this comes down, this is how you're going to do your job, NSA. And they have to make sure that all that stuff is excluded or even purged from databases or, you know, by whatever means necessary to make sure that that information either is gone or doesn't go out, any of those things, right? It's, it's, they're basically, when you get right down to it, it's a job that's almost impossible to do without pissing somebody off right. on either side of the argument. Nakasone right. said specifically, and I will read from his letter uh, specifically, the NSA does not buy or use location data collected from phones known to be used in the United States, either with or without a court order. He says this categorically. Right. Similarly, the NSA does not buy or use location data collected from automobile telematics systems from vehicles known to be used in the United States. The NSA does buy and use commercially available NetFlow, that's metadata, non-content data, related, okay, here's the, uh, here's the smoking gun, to right. wholly domestic internet communications and internet communications, ah, where one side of the communication is a U.S. internet protocol address and the other is abroad. And they've always said right. this. We have communications when somebody's communicating outside the U.S., from inside the U.S. Right. Now, notice that the last part of that sentence was conveniently omitted from the other. Yeah, you're right. The people making the other point, right? Yeah. Like, they're they're pretty clear. They're like, look, like because the reality is they don't want the other info, right? They're not going to spend money to get info that's only U.S. people because they can't use it anyway. So, I know it. you, Alan, and I know you're a good guy. Um, and I trust mm -hmm. you. And you no longer work for the Defense Department or intelligence agencies. You're a private individual. Yep. You're gonna. Yep. You're 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 a, a, somebody who we trust as a geek. You understand our concerns, and you feel fully confident that Nakasone is not misleading Ron Wyden. That this is an accurate representation, and that they are in fact they don't want domestic communications. Everything represented in that letter aligns exactly with my experience having to actually like punch the clock doing that work i trust you i i actually trust you more than i do edward snowden i mean if you say that's the case i believe you well no listen he had a point though edward snowden had a point which which we talked about in twit i don't know how many hundreds of All twits those, ago now one years ago or something <laughs> right yeah but there was a case where okay so we just said that you know they can have this collection where if one side's foreign the other side's u.s well that we learned through the snowden uh, you know, documents and stuff that you've released was that, hey, there's people in the org that could potentially see both sides of that that actually shouldn't be able to, right? Because right. there's supposed to be procedures in place to prevent that right. sort of thing from happening, right? Um, and there was apparently a gaping hole in those procedures, and that's what Snowden, if anything, I'm kind of happy that that did happen because it was a, a problem, right? Uh, it kind of undermined all of the work that I was doing. Like, I had to make sure... Nobody was doing searches on any U.S. person's names or any of this other stuff. And to know that there was just an IT guy up at the top of the, the IT stack there that could just run a query and nobody would know the wiser, that's a problem. It needed to be fixed. Well, and also to I, be fair, it's not part of the NSA or the CAA's charter to spy on Americans uh, on American soil. But for that, we have the FBI and other law enforcement agencies and i they do buy data too yeah and i do right. believe they do buy location data they buy metadata they may even buy content data they buy whatever data brokers will sell right i mean they have whatever set of rules they're that's required their, that's their they're to all this is legal under. in fact that's one of the things nakasone says is it's legal it's you know we only do what's legal and we can't spy on domestic uh, but the information we get is legally obtained we don't need a warrant to get that because of data brokers actually it's been my contention now maybe uh, maybe you want to weigh in on this that one of the reasons we don't regulate data brokers which i think all americans who are informed about them would like us to do is because congress is periodically told sub rosa that the uh, law enforcement agencies would prefer they do not shut down the data brokers because they're a valuable source of information yes I'm I'm personally not thrilled with the whole data broker thing. Yeah, nobody like is. That piece of it. Yeah. Right. But Congress yeah. refuses to do anything about it. Right. And I think that that's probably at the behest of law enforcement. 
Yeah, it, my, my personal take on that is that the, this NS, the whole NSA story, this whole thing shouldn't have even had to happen because the whole data broker thing shouldn't even be a, a, exist in the first right. place. So instead right. of blaming the NSA or casting stones at the NSA, let's shut down the data brokers. Right? Anybody disagree with that one? No, no, I don't think you will find a normal person, and maybe even Steven Sanofsky would agree yeah. that data brokers yeah. are a problem. Although, actually, here's what I'm going to make a super convoluted argument. The existence of data brokers and the purchasing of consumer data keeps a lot of apps you might enjoy that's true. free and that's available true. for you to use. There's a whole ecosystem. You're right. No, that's true. I mean, we've often said the same thing about uh, credit consumer credit reporting agencies like Experian and Equifax and TransUnion. Ugh, ugh, creepy. But honestly, <laughs> if they didn't exist, you wouldn't be able to give or get a loan or rent a home or anything, rent an apartment or anything. Well, you would just, I mean, there's actually a whole bunch of companies using AI to establish right. like payback records for right. people. Anyway. Maybe we don't need them anymore. Something, something AI, like but, that would exist. Right. It has to. And Experian and stuff, they're, they're data brokers. Right. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.